All right, midterm review, this time talking about perception. Again, really important concept to understand that seeing and perceiving are two very different things. We see a billion things every day. Um, we only perceive a small fraction of those. And then a third stage is transforming what we're perceiving into some kind of knowledge. Um, but they're three very different phenomena. They happen in different parts of the brains. Um, they're actually called um, system one, system two, which I'll talk about in a second. So our vision is very fast. Evolutionarily, it had to be. We had to survive. Um, reasoning, which is a result of um, a filtering system um, that works through perceiving into knowing, is a very slow and conscious thing that we do. So the subconscious mind is our vision. Uh, it's immediate, automatic, no thinking. It happens on autopilot. That's called system one um, vision. And then our conscious mind and what we do with the reasoning um, is called system two. Um, you, you perceive things before you even know what they are. Like a movement out of the corner of your eye, for example, you're going to react before you know what it really is. And that's evolution. We're trying to survive. Um, but for data visualization, it's important because we want to leverage what we know about human perception and pre-attention so that we can make our plots and graphs as effective as possible um, to be good communicators. So this is the example I used um, in the original set of slides. How many threes do we see? And because they're all treated, all these numbers are treated the exact same, um, it takes a lot of conscious effort to read through them all and retain where the threes are. If we make a small change and add color and uh, decrease the contrast, we can completely change the task from one that required a lot of attention and focus and thinking and memory and retention to a task that was immediately, it was completely intuitive. Your brain saw the threes and, and like, um, mapped them before your brain even remembered that you were supposed to be looking for threes, right? This is called pre-attention. It's the ability of the low-level human visual system to effortlessly identify basic visual properties. <laughs> it's a mouthful. <laughs> pre-attention. This is really important stuff. Look at this. You immediately perceive an angry man and probably even associate loud noises and tension, stress with this scene. This is an immediate thing that happens. Um, perceiving this requires zero effort. It comes completely naturally. You didn't, you didn't have to think at all. Same with the equation on the right. It's equally, equally effortless to identify this as a math equation. But I would bet that... Uh, I would actually bet a lot of money that none of you glanced at that um, equation on the right and immediately saw the number 351, which is the product of 27 and 13. The effort to do that math would require a lot of conscious effort, memory. Um, the initial identification, though, in both cases is, is system one, and the mental arithmetic that you'd be required to do um, for the math on the right is system two. All right, that's, that's, it's really, this is, it's not necessarily important about system one and system two, but it's just um, maybe important to really understand the difference between our subconscious seeing, um, our subconscious attention, what we're aware of before we're even thinking. Um, this is another example I used in the earlier slides. If I were to ask you to describe the distribution of the two different types of power plants, You'd have to really sit there and, and kind of like scan back and forth and back and forth and make a mental map of one type versus the other in order to get a sense of the distribution. So, you know, again, it's about encoding as much information and understanding as possible in a way that's perceived quickly by our system one. And that frees up system two for more, you know, involved understanding, more complicated analysis. So by using just shape, we're requiring a lot, of, um, a lot of work. Here, by dual encoding, we're still using shape, but we've added color. Um, hopefully you agree that the graphic on the right makes it much easier 
to pre-attentively evaluate the distribution between the two um, factory types. We, we have to have these two systems of thinking so that our conscious minds don't just get swamped with mundane processing. If we tried to perceive and, and be aware of and process everything we saw, we would just be like a jiggly puddle on the ground. We couldn't, we couldn't function. So system one filters out um, unnecessary information and feeds the good stuff to system two for further processing. So again, for data viz, the idea is to use this knowledge, use what we know about human perception to create effective visualizations. Otherwise, we'd be completely overwhelmed by all the information around us. Okay, so we don't perceive everything we see. System one acts like a filter so we don't get bogged down with a bunch of sensory garbage. So encode your data so that the meaningful bits stand out the most, stand out quickly, readily, um, really efficiently. And then remember that our attention is drawn to things that contrast from the norm. And some contrasts are easier to detect than others, like with the, the shapes of the power plants or factories or whatever they were. Um, we had two sets, but it's much more challenging to detect a difference in the shapes than it was to detect a contrast between the two colors. So our visualizations have to be based on how people automatically see, process, and think. All right, oops, ignore this. Uh, Gestalt principles, um, just another kind of review thing. So on the left, there are three groups that are formed by proximity. Um, the, the vertical lines create a stronger relationship and create the columns. And because they're connected, um, this connection is more powerful than the proximity principle. Um, and then this ring enclosing the top half is even stronger than the vertical lines, even though they're the same color. But this enclosure is stronger than the connection which is stronger than the proximity as far as creating meaningful groups. And then on the right side, it's pretty much the same, but the, the group here is being done with values. So we have a, a gray versus a black. Um, and th that creates three groups as well, but the horizontal lines connecting trumps the difference in you know, color or value. Um, and then the enclosure actually trumps um, as far as making a group trumps the connection or um, the color or value. All right, so we've talked a lot about the importance of honesty in data representations. Um, when we're encoding data with symbols, like in a scatter plot, and we're you know varying the size of the of the circle by population or something, or on a map, the symbol area must differ proportionally. To the changing values. This is part of you know being truthful with our data, not exaggerating. So I've, I've talked to some of you about how in ARC map we have the option to choose proportional versus um, graduated sim, uh, symbology, but in Tableau you don't have that option. You can blow all the symbols up, but they're always going to remain proportional to the values that they're representing. Okay, so uh, that's, yeah, that's really important. Uh, things get a little complicated. Um, we learned that humans tend to underestimate areas and volumes. That's what this, this plot is reminding you of. Um, some software will compensate for this, this measured effect of underestimating by adjusting symbol sizes to offset our natural tendency to underestimate these things. I'm kind of talking in circles. Um, so I, I don't know if Tableau does that or not, but it is something that, that is done and can be done. And I don't think it's necessarily wrong as long as it's consistent. I mean, I think it helps, um, it helps tell the story. Um, the other complication is the perception of areas and how those sizes can be impacted or affected by um, their surroundings. You know, so these two inner circles are actually the same size, but this one looks so much bigger because it's in contrast to the smaller circles. 
and this one looks smaller because of its surroundings. So we just have to take all these things into consideration, be as honest as we can, and account for some of these things that people naturally do in perception. Okay, um, again, our eyes more easily perceive differences than absolute values. So even though we've, we will talk in a minute about the effectiveness rankings and how position along a, a common scale is a great way to pull um, more exact values from a graphic, um, it is human nature um, to perceive differences proportionally. So if we have these two long bars, the difference between them seems smaller than the difference between these two bars because we're looking at the percent difference of the total area, the total blue area. And the percent difference here is much greater. This is why um, bar charts have to start at zero because this is starting to lie because um, we've truncated it. Um, yeah, the difference, yeah, I just said that, that the difference between the two bars seems greater when they're smaller like this. Okay, but there are alternatives. So this is how a bar chart must be set up. We have to start at zero. Um, but um, it would be, so yeah, again, it would be lying to just truncate these, right? And just kind of cut them off here. Um, or to, you know, just exaggerate it somehow. But we, we have options. It just really depends on the message that you're going after. So these two plots show the same data. Um, the bar chart on the left starts with zero, as it must, and on the right, it's the same values, um, but we're marking the value with just a line like this, so we don't have the whole bar. This way we can, um, we can edit our axis and uh, have it span from 42,000 to 54,000, right, which is right in here, and exaggerate the differences between the salaries. So I guess, you know, again, it comes down to messaging. Both plots are completely correct, but this helps, you know, exaggerate the differences. This downplays the differences. So that messaging or that, that ability to editorialize a little bit, both are correct, but one is going to tell a stronger um, story about the differences and one is going to downplay. And so that's, that's where it comes down to um, your choice as the data visualizer. Um, to quote Edward Tufte, use a baseline that shows the data and tells the story that you want to tell. That's my insert. Um, use a baseline that isn't focusing on the zero point, right? You don't have to accept this. There are alternatives. Okay.